Hi, greetings from my writing room here on the uh, the border of Herefordshire and Monmouthshire. This is a special hello to all the customers of Cover to Cover Bookshop. I was meant to be doing a um, an event talking about my new book, The Black Art of Killing. Here it is, uh, very soon for you. Sadly, we've had to cancel. Um, the book is being launched this Thursday evening, April the 2nd, and a number of events I've had lined up have all been cancelled. Can't be helped, um, but we can continue to support all the wonderful independent bookshops who are still mailing out books. Now, especially for cover to cover, I've not read any of this book in public before, and I'm not a great one at reading my own work, but I'm going to try, okay? So my hero, Leo Black, is a former SAS major who's trying to put the army behind him and become an academic in Oxford University. He wants to be a military historian. He wants to put his military experience to good use and to help prevent needless wars in the future. But somewhere near the start of the book, an old friend of his, a sergeant from the regiment, is murdered. And his former commanding officer, Freddie Towers, is now working for the Ministry of Defence in some fairly shady capacity. And he persuades Leo back out of retirement to perform a mission. And we join him here where he's been pursuing the mysterious Sarah Drecker and her two helpers who have been meeting an MI5 agent in the British Museum in order to collect information from him. Black has failed to capture Sarah Drecker and he is making his getaway with Freddie Towers. Bad luck, can't be helped. My fault for biting off more than you could chew. Didn't count on her coming with tooled up protection to the British Museum. Probably should have done. She's audacious all right. Towers drove as quickly as traffic would allow down Kingsway towards Aldwych. Yet another police car screamed past them at 70 miles per hour, sirens wailing. Don't worry about them. They've been told to look out for a different vehicle. Black didn't ask for details. As far as he was concerned, the less he knew about Tower's dark web of connections, the better. His principal emotion was one of frustration at having come up short. The soldier in him had had his pride dented. Nevertheless, he couldn't deny that it was strangely intoxicating to be driving through central London, gliding above the law or that the taste of action had stirred something dormant in him back to life. Despite all his better instincts, his blood seemed to vibrate with wicked elation. The body will be sent over to Guy's. The pathologist should have it on the slab within the hour, Towers said. His phone, sitting in the tray next to the gear stick, buzzed twice. Check that for me, would you? Black reached for it and glanced at the screen. From Clayton. Did he get pictures? Black swiped the message open. There was no text, just a short video clip. He played it. The footage was taken from a minute camera disguised in Clayton's wristwatch. Black tilted the phone to get the picture the right way up. Clayton had managed to capture Susan Drecker's face square on as she approached him. It vanished for several seconds as she took a seat, then reappeared, this time seen from below and mostly in profile. Good ones, face shots, several angles. Thank God for that. Fancy helping me find out some more about her? If she's as good as I think she is, she'll be out of the country within the hour. That's not what I asked, Leo. You'd at least like to know her identity before you head back to Oxford. That's an invitation, by the way, not an order. Without waiting for an answer, he nodded to the glove box. You'll find a flask in there. I could do with a drop myself. Black reached inside and brought out a tarnished silver hip flask decorated with a regimental crest the same one that Towers had passed around so many times in Bosnia, Sierra Leone, Baghdad and Bastion. He flipped the lid and took a slug, the cold metal tingling slightly against his lips. Single malt, nectar, like something conjured by an alchemist. Thought you'd like it, Craig Alaki, 32 years old. Towers smiled at Black's contented expression. Don't hog it, man. Black took another drink and passed it over. Towers raised it to his lips and swallowed several large mouthfuls as he navigated the turn into the busy strand traffic. My God, that's good. He gave an appreciative sigh. 
You know what, Leo? I wasn't sure you still had it in you, but you have, you bastard. Look at you. You look ten years younger. Towers was right. He felt alive. From the moment Dracker had appeared, he had been like a caged hound released to the scent. He took back the flask and drank some more. The whiskey danced down his throat and glowed inside him. Yes, said Black, as Nelson's column hoved into view. I would like to know who the hell she is. There we go. Um, so Leo Black's adventures take him from the Welsh borders to Oxford, to London, to Paris, and then later in the book, all the way to the jungles of Venezuela. I hope you'll find it um, an exciting read. It was certainly fun, uh, fun to write. It took, oh, it only took 10 years, actually, here and there, but it's, uh, it's written now. So if you want to read it, please do order from cover to cover, and I really look forward to seeing you at a rescheduled event very soon. Bye.